Hey Art Nerds, today is an exciting day because today we are finally going to get to Windsor and Newton watercolors. We're going to do it in a big way, so keep watching. So inspired by my M. Graham multi-brand test, I thought it would be really fun to put Windsor and Newton's money, theoretically, really my money, where their mouths are. They claim that they have the half pans that are specially formulated to always reconstitute well. Now I've used Windsor & Newton for many years. I've used the other brands for a few years. I personally have not noticed a difference, but I thought the best way to put this to the test would be to pit their specially formulated half pans against their tubes. So what I did is initially I went on Dick Blick and I ordered the same colors on both. But then I went digging through my stash of art supplies and I found some additional colors. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna make up two palettes and I'm gonna denote when the colors are the same and I'm gonna to try to swatch them so they're next to each other so that you guys can actually visually compare. Do an optical pat down, if you will, of the colors. But the thing about, the thing, the reason I wanna test this way is a half pan like this can cost anywhere from six to twelve dollars. A tube of watercolor, and this is Windsor and Newton Professionals, this isn't Cotman. A tube of their watercolor, and these are the little five milliliter tubes, I believe. Yeah, five milliliter. They cost about the same amount, but you can get about three half pan fills from these. So really these theoretically, if they perform the same, are more economical than buying the half pans. Now, some of the half pans are actually formulated a little bit differently. The colors aren't exactly the same. So you might have preferences in one format over the other, and that could explain, you know, using one over the other. But in today's review, we're going to find out whether or not the half pans not only perform the same as, I'm sorry, the tubes, not only perform the same as the half pans, just directly straight from the tube, but also we're gonna compare them with dried half pans of these. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I am ready to get cracking. So the packaging on the half pans contains not only the color name as well as a swatch of the color, but also the transparency, the light fastness, and the pigments inside. This information is also available on the actual individual pans themselves. So you don't actually have to hold on to this packaging. You can remove it, it just takes up space. It's just store packaging and uh, these will have all the information you need on them. The same goes for the tubes. The tubes have a swatch of color. They also have the series as well as a permanence rating. So transparent yellow has a permanence of A. And then on the back, there is an opacity swatch as well as a light fastness rating and the pigments. So what we're going to do for today's big unboxing swatch is we're going to be talking about, we're gonna be comparing the pigments in both. We're gonna be comparing the light fastness in both. We may even compare the series in both and the cost in both. So this is really gonna be a pretty in-depth review. I have here my swatch sheet. I have subdivided into three sections from tube wet, from tube dry, and from pan. This way, hopefully we can compare things directly. Now, I'm only going to swatch, just for the purposes of this review, I'm only going to swatch the colors that I have in common. And that way we can actually compare the colors fairly. Now this mixes a lot of colors, so I will be doing follow-up swatching. This isn't going to be it. So the colors we're going to be looking at today are transparent yellow, scarlet lake, alizarin crimson, permanent sap green, French ultramarine, and burnt umber. For this tube test, I'm going to do it pretty simply. We're going to do a gradiated wash and then we're going to do a mass tone at the bottom. Now I've already put down my black pigment lines and those are to help test for opacity. Thank you. 
my friends so the tube portion of our testing is done i should let you guys know that we're not going to talk price until the very end just because i don't want to prejudice myself so i'm sure you guys can appreciate that so we tested transparent yellow scarlet lake alizarin crimson french ultramarine sap green and burnt umber my initial thoughts are lovely brilliant colors especially the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber some granulation particularly in those colors colors move freely and easily transparent pale yellow is a lovely versatile color that shades nicely and this was tested on blick premier watercolor paper so we're using a cotton rag paper for this to really just bring out the best of these watercolors. Um, I also went ahead and I filled my half pans. I filled them up as far as they would go and even tapped them down. We're going to see how much shrinking occurs as they dry out. But the pigments used in these are from left to right, transparent yellow, PY150. It's a series one color. It is transparent and it has a light fastness of one. Scarlet Lake. It is PR188. It is a series two color. It is semi-transparent and has a light fastness of two. It is the only one here that has a two light fast. French Ultramarine PB29, series two. It is transparent. It has, oh, I'm sorry. I skipped the Lizard and Crimson. My mistake. A Lizard and Crimson, sorry. PR83, series one, transparent. And the light fastness is not listed on the tube. So I'm going to do a little bit of digging before I say goodbye. French Ultramarine PB29, Series 2, transparent with a light fastness of 1. Sap Green PG36, PY110. It is Series 1, it is transparent and has a light fastness of 1. And Burnt Umber PBR7 and PBR101 and PY42. So it is the only color that I tested today that has three pigments. Um, the only other one with multiples has only two. Usually you want to go for colors that have fewer pigments. They're going to mix a little cleaner. It is series one. It is transparent and has a light fastness of one. Now, traditionally, alizarin crimson is not light fast. It tends to be light fugitive, but I know some companies have gone to paints to either recreate the color or to find something um, that will kind of fix it. So I'm going to do a little bit digging and I'll get back to you guys. So Windsor & Newton has a permanent alizarin crimson and then the regular original alizarin crimson with permanent being a little bit more pricey. We're not going to discuss the price though of permanent alizarin crimson compared to regular alizarin crimson. Now let's see here on the site it says light fastness ASTM which I will admit, I don't actually know what that means. So we're going to do a little bit more digging, but it is a, a synthetic lake pigment from the matter plant. All right, so typically ASTM is used in reference with a number one through four, with one being excellent light fastness, or I'm sorry, one through three. Um, two being very good light fastness and three being not sufficiently light fast to be used in artist paints. The Windsor & Newton site has this just listed as ASTM with no number behind it. So I don't really know what to say about that. I'm going to take a look at Permanent Alizarin Crimson just to give myself a little bit of comparison. I will tell you guys, I do paint with Alizarin Crimson. I really love the color. I think it's really nice for like cheek colors. So where is the light fastness for Permanent Alizarin Crimson? It says permanence rating A. They're not even on their site. They're not even consistent with their like their information because it doesn't list the light fastness. It just says permanence rating. Maybe they're switching everything over. I don't know. That's a little bit concerning. I won't lie. We're going to look at the pan and see if we can find any more information. And no. Oh, it says permanence B for alizarin crimson in the half pan. That doesn't mean it's the same as the permanence for the tube watercolor. So next, we are gonna go ahead and swatch our from pan colors.
just wanted to take a moment to compare the mask colors or the mask tones for the tube colors and for the half pans. Now the tube colors have not finished drying so I'm going to compare them again once they've dried out. But I just thought it was interesting how close some of the colors are and how much lighter some of the colors are. I'm going to approach the half pan swatching the same way I approach the from tube swatching. We're going to do a gradiated wash and then we're going to do a mask tone. Alright, so while my mask tone swatches dry down here at the bottom, I want to talk to you about these half pan paints a bit. So I felt like the colors are fairly saturated and fairly evenly milled. It was hard to get a wash as the colors want to disperse quickly. I pre-activated the pans as you guys saw with a drop of water since most half pan watercolors need a moment to reactivate. Sap green appears to be a bit lighter than the tube version. Alizarin crimson doesn't seem to have as much depth. Transparent yellow doesn't shade as much and burnt umber lacks the depth as well. Even in mass tone, colors just overall lack depth and interest compared to their two counterparts. The pigments used in these going from left to right for transparent yellow it is PY150. It is again series one. It is transparent. There is a permanence rating of A, which is new to or unique. It doesn't, it's not available for the tubes. Um, permanence rating of A and a light fastness of one. Scarlet Lake PR188 is series two. It is semi-transparent. It has a permanence of A and a light fastness of two. Alizarin Crimson PR83 is series one. It has it is transparent. It has a permanence of B and there is still no light fastness given. So that is <laughs> probably pretty huge. Uh, French Ultramarine PB29 Series 2, Transparent, Permanence of A and Light Fastness 1, Sap Green um, PY110 Series 1, Transparent, Permanence Rating of A and Light Fastness of 1, and then Burnt Umber PBR7, PR101, PY42 is Series 1, Transparent, has a double A Permanence, it's the only one I've come across so far with that and it has a light fast rating of one as well. Between the tubes and the pans, I find no pigment discrepancies, no light fastness discrepancies, and no series discrepancies. So they're all, you know, a transparent yellow in the tube versus a transparent yellow in a half pan. They're gonna use the same pigment. They're gonna be in the same series number. So at least they're staying consistent with that. It's not like they're switching out pigments that might work better in say a half pan format than in a tube format, at least for these colors that we're testing here. So I am gonna allow everything to dry out thoroughly. And then we're gonna go ahead and assemble two mini um, palettes using Altoid tins because why not? And I'm also going to take a few minutes to go ahead and get all of my other uh, pans ready. Hey art nerds, so I am back. It's been a few days. I have my dried Windsor and Newton self-filled half pan so we can resume our testing. I actually have all of the colors that I wanted to put into this palette in here and I have another video where I'm doing a compare to swatch off of the entire palette. But for the purposes of this video, we're only going to be looking at Transparent Yellow, Scarlet Lake, Alizarin Crimson, French Ultramarine, Sap Green, and then Burnt Umber. So I hope you guys are ready, because I am. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to the pans that I'm gonna be using. And as you guys saw, we've already swatched the pre-filled half pans. So now it's really just time to get to the nitty gritty. So this has pretty much dried. 
These two have had a few days to dry out, so I'm going to do my lift testing now, but I sort of suspect this is gonna lift a little bit easier just because it hasn't had as long an opportunity to really soak in and dry into the fibers. So I'm going to use a synthetic angled shader to do my lifting. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that in time-lapse. So regarding the dried tube paints, um, I felt like they performed fairly similarly to the colors from Half Pan. Um, they're quick to reactivate and they provide consistent color. The Windsor and Newton rep who spoke at Hands On Creativity mentioned that their half pans are specially formulated to handle repeat rewetting, something two watercolors are not designed to do. So issues may become apparent as time passes. Colors do get a bit soupy in their half pans, unlike the pre-made half pans. Gradation is also less apparent as colors blend and move more readily. But otherwise, just from this testing, I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference in performance from the paints from the tube, the paints dried from the tube, and the paints specifically from half pans. That said, I am gonna put these two to separate field tests and we'll see if there's any sort of performance issues that pop up from there. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I also noticed that lifting tends to be consistent among colors with the dried ones, so dry from tube and dried in their half pans. Um, they tend to lift a little less readily than the colors from tube. I'm not really sure if maybe some of the gum Arabic has evaporated out. I don't really think that would be a thing. Um, it could just be my own experience and not really something that's universal. But they're not particularly lifting colors, at least on this nice cotton rag paper. Now, some of you guys might find that's a problem, but for me, I enjoy doing glazes. I do a lot of glazes. Um, I also do a lot of layers. So the fact that they're not prone to lifting is actually great for me because it means I can do a lot of layers. All right, my friends, so it is time to talk prices. We're going to be talking about the price from tubes as compared to the price from pans. And I misspoke a little bit when I said you could get three refills from the tubes. If you're using the larger tubes, you definitely can get more, but I would definitely say you can get two, two and a half, but maybe not three full refills. All right, so we're just going to do it in color order. So for transparent yellow, it's $6.47 for a half pan and $5.81 for one of the five milliliter tubes that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. Again, you can get at least two fills from a five milliliter tube. So already the, the tube is cheaper than the half pans. Uh, Scarlet Lake is $7.49 for a half pan, $6.53 for a five milliliter tube. Alizarin Crimson is $6.47 for a half pan, 581 for a five milliliter tube. French Ultramarine is 749 for a half pan, 653 for a five milliliter tube. Sap Green is 647 for a half pan, uh, 581 for a five milliliter tube. And Burnt Umber is 647 for a half pan and 581 for a military. Mm -hmm. A five milliliter tube, almost at a military tube. So all of these prices came from Dick Blick. That's where I purchased the supplies that I reviewed for this video from. So those are the prices I'm going to go with. Um, as of this recording, I feel like you're getting a better deal by buying tubes and filling them yourself. I mean, you can get inexpensive empty half pans on Amazon. I can link that in the description below and you can just store it in an Altoids tin. You really don't need anything fancy. You can also buy empty tins on Amazon as well. So, you know, for the time being, I used to assume their half pans were better, but in my daily driver palette, which is just a mishmash of all sorts of things. And I've used this palette for several years and I use it regularly for seven inch Kara pages. I mean, it's got all kinds of stuff. It's got 
different brands. It's got stuff I've filled from tubes. It's got cat hair. It's got half pans that I've purchased, but I'm increasingly moving towards just filling half pans because it's more economical and I haven't really noticed a big decrease in quality. At least um, I've noticed a bigger change in quality brand to brand than I do from half pan to self-filling from tube. So I know that the Windsor & Newton official tagline, not really official tagline, but really their party line is that these are formulated to be used in half pans. They're formulated to be re-wet and reworked. So this is what you should go with. But I'm going to tell you as somebody who's painted over 200 comic pages in watercolor, I'm not really seeing a lot of difference in quality. And these are so much more economical than buying the individual half pants. So you guys are going to have to keep an eye out for my follow up videos as well as for my field test video. But I hope you guys found this helpful, useful and informative. I hope this answered some questions for you. And I hope this provides information that you can use to make decisions when you're purchasing watercolors or when you're opting to refill your palette. Now, I mean, obviously, if you enjoy using like one of the big shell shape palettes, you're pretty much going to be using tube watercolors anyway. So it's really up to how you like to work and what your needs are. These do get a little soupy. These have already dried out and I actually I didn't even use these today. I don't know why I said that, but these do tend to dry a little quicker. These tend to stay wet longer because the dried gum Arabic is hydrophilic and it wants to absorb that water. So if you're doing like plain air painting, working like this might not be the best option for you um, because you do need to allow them to dry out. But if you're working at home in a studio, filling your own half pants can be a great economical option. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again really soon. Bye guys.